Um, so now, cast your mind back to Saturday the 12th of July, 1980. Olivia Newton-John and ELO were at the top of the charts with Xanadu. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher had taken power. No! Margaret Thatcher had taken power. No! That's better. Uh, Ronald Reagan was riding high in the polls. No! And a ten-year-old Jamie Driscoll was at his first ever mind scholar with his mum. No. My mum was an Algo official at the time. I remember her telling me as we were walking past to look up at the bounty, uh, the, the balcony of the county hotel. Uh, and who was there? I have no idea because I was 10 years old and I didn't recognise any of them. But I did hear Tony Benn speak at the right top race course round. And I remember, I remember being inspired by his humanity. And back in those days, it was just an uncovered wooden flat platform, regardless of the weather. And the PA, you couldn't even hear it in the back of the crowd. And it's come on such a long time since then. I took my own kids, who are here tonight, for the first time. I think it was 2016. And we marched with the RMT. Woo! And a massively supportive union of me for, for some years now. Thank you very much, guys. Um, and they had a great time, although they were a bit too young to join in with the beers after the time. So. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and they still are. So, <laughs> so uh, my, <laughs> yeah, when I'm not looking. Um, my mum was with me there last year, actually, um, and, and my son. Three generations of socialist crystals all getting sunburned while hearing Mick Lynch give a cracking speech. So, uh, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll wait for um, I'm sure you've, you've all got stories of the gala. Um, it's in the hearts and minds of everyone gathered in this room tonight. Thousands more of us across the North East and the world. And the word unique is overused, but it is a truly unique event. The banners, the brass band music, it's evocative of a whole working class culture. The graft, the craft, the solidarity, and when you see 200,000 people turn up in one place, you get a sense of the power of our labour movement. You feel it in your bones. You feel it in your marrow. And as the saying goes, the past we inherit, the future we build. And there's not the time there, I've been working hard on building that future. A future where workers are rewarded and respected, not exploited and exhausted. That's why all of the 4,766 new jobs we've created are backed by our Good Work Pledge. Full accreditation requires employers to recognise trade unions, pay a real living wage, build a balanced and diverse workforce, and give support for career profession, and ban repressive practices like fire and rehire. We've actively promoted this. I require investors to sign up to it if they want any money from us. And that now covers 140,000 workers. We're building a future where those out of work are encouraged and enriched and not scolded and sanctioned. And that's why we've increased the adult skills enrolment by 50% since the evolution. That's 11,000 more adults every year gaining vital skills from welding to accounting allowing them to earn more money. And 57% of those are women who have suffered for far too long from poor pay and poor advancement, which is why our Equalities Assembly shapes all our work, whatever the agenda, or colour, or sexual orientation, or disability. Everyone has not just the right to be who they want to be, but deserves the support to help them get there. We're building a future where kids have hungry minds and not hungry bellies. And that's why I set about our child poverty prevention programme. Poverty proofing the school day, working across 90 schools, offering welfare advice to parents at the school gates. As a result of this, one parent in North Tyneside was able to claim over £4,000 in backdated benefits owed to her for her disabled son. Now that's a lot of money for anyone. But in the jaws of a cost of living crisis, it's absolutely life changing. And by the way, based on the success of our scheme, I made sure the expanded child poverty prevention programme is written into the new North East devolution. 
And we're building a future where decent housing is accessible and affordable, not overpriced and out of reach. That's why our Brownfield Housing Programme is funding Lyndon Walk in Blythe. Now that won't deliver 10% or 30% or 50% affordable housing. 100% of the homes built there will be affordable. And uh, as much as it's fun to see headlines like Mayor Who Saved Newcastle United uh, in the Chronicle, or on BBC Sport, or in construction news. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, even Mick Lynch hasn't been in construction news. <laughs> uh, my reason for knocking back the strawberry place developments was because there was zero affordable housing in those proposals. And we're building a zero carbon future. Our Green New Deal Fund delivering £34 million of carbon reduction for local businesses and non-profits, putting solar panels on, reducing their carbon footprint. And we've invested in infrastructure and supply, mainly Blythe and the Tyne and Mecca for offshore renewables in the energy sector. We were once the engineering powerhouse of our nation. Let's make the North East the beating heart of the green industrial revolution. And all of this is possible with sound economics, by the way. For every pound I invest, we return more than three pounds to Treasury in payroll taxes alone. So don't ever let anybody tell you that socialist policies yeah, don't work. Yeah. I put trade unions at the heart of everything we do, and proudly say so. Too often Labour politicians shy away from supporting unions. Trade unionised workplaces are more productive, more innovative, and have lower staff turnover. And that's why when the Tories cut the Union Learn project, I stepped in and funded it. So it's stronger than it ever was before. With £430,000 for the Northern TUC to help low paid workers get learning opportunities and earn better wages. That wouldn't happen without devolution. So, does devolution solve all our problems? Of course it doesn't. But the more financial independence we can get from central government, the more good we can do. Labour has only been in power nationally for 30 years of the last 122. So that's why together, with our seven local council leaders, I pushed government for an enhanced devolution package worth over 4.2 billion quid, including the power to take the buses back into public control. And the deal also includes a regional wealth fund where we can take equity stakes in local firms to make sure our economy grows in a green and inclusive way. Where we start to change the idea that we privatise the profits and nationalise the losses. This way, we, the public, will own stakes in these businesses and we get the good dividends. And of course, there are some things only a national government can do, but I can show for them. I want a proper windfall tax on the energy companies with zero loopholes and I'll go you one better. I want to see a wealth tax so we finally reverse the flow of money away from billionaires and tax havens and back into public services and the pockets of working people. Yeah. Well, let's be honest. We wouldn't need a windfall tax if the utilities were owned by us. Yeah. I want public ownership. Uh, Royal, Mayor, Energy and Water no accident that the key monopolies have been privatised at the same time as wealth inequality has increased. And I want a government that finally understands that they should listen to the education professionals and health professionals on the front line because they know how to do their jobs better than any special advisors in Whitehall. And, uh, and finally I want to pay tribute to every striking worker and the people supporting them, their families and their union officials. This year already I've stood on picket lines with workers from the UCU, NEU, Unite, RCN. I've supported campaigns from Unite, Unison, GMB, the CWU, RMT, ASLEF, NEU, NESUWT and AUE, the Arts Union of England. And there's a standing offer to help any of you anytime you need me. And who else do I see on those picket lines? 
standing shoulder to shoulder. Socialist MPs like Kate Osborne. Yeah. Yeah. Like Ian Lagan, like Graham Morris, like Ian Manns, and Mary Floyd. And these who know their history, who know that the Labour Party was formed as the political wing of the organised labour movement to advance the interests of working people and their families. You know, someone told me that the Tories are incompetent, that they don't know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. Those VIP PPE contracts weren't an accident. And it's not just the Tory politicians. It wasn't Conservative Central Office that laid off all those workers on P&O ferries. It's the private company Royal Mail threatening our postal workers with compulsory redundancies. But it was the Tories who privatised it. The Tories act in the interest of their class. They gave them maximum freedom to make money and avoid tax. They give political cover with lies about economic freedom while they're taking away the right to strike. Now that's why I want a Labour government that stands with workers and will commit to reversing the anti-union laws. Not just the minimum service level laws they're trying to push through, but all those anti-union laws that make Britain the most repressive place for organised labour of any advanced economy. Because this is about class politics. And if you have to work for a living um, to pay your bills, you're working class whether you went to university or not. Whether you have a mortgage, whether you pay rent. Wealth doesn't come from hedge fund managers placing bets on asset bubbles. Wealth comes from working people. Wealth is construction workers insulating homes. Engineers installing wind farms. Rail workers getting paid people where they need to be safely. From telecom workers connecting us to information. Wealth comes from teachers educating children with the skills of the future. And politics will end, and politics will flow, and polls will go up, and polls will go down. But my politics won't change. Because I know this country will never be safe and prosperous until it's run in the interests of the people who do the work. I've got your back, and I know you've got mine. Yeah. Well done,